next one is called powers of 2. Complete the function that takes a non-negative integer n as input and returns a list of all the powers of 2 with the exponent ranging from 0 to n inclusive. Let's look at the examples. So if you have 0 as input, you should get an array containing the value 1. That represents 2 to the 0 power, right? Anything to the 0 power is 1. So that's where that answer comes from. And again, we're doing non-negative, so 0 represents our lower bound. It's not negative. And so consider the input 1. Now you would have 2 to the 0 and 2 to the 1. And so we learned that 2 to the 0 is 1. And then 2 to the first power is just 2 itself, right? And then we see it going to the next step, where n equals 2. And it had the previous two values, as well as 2 squared, or uh, yeah, 2 to the second power. And you get the 1, 2, 4. And you can imagine that expanding with 3. You know, it would add the answer 8, 2 to the third power is 8. Uh, 16, 32, 64, etc. So we've got to cover that for whatever n is. And it looks like they expect something called a big integer array. And I assume they chose that because they're dealing with, well, we're doing exponents, right? And that can grow incredibly fast. Their tests don't seem to really push the boundaries. Uh, who knows what they have lurking in the attempt when we try that, but maybe they will eventually get big. I looked up the big integer. This isn't something that I use in my work, but uh, it's interesting. An arbitrarily large signed integer, an immutable type, whose value in theory has no upper or lower bounds. That's very different, right? We know that can't be true in practice. Uh, there would certainly be limits to the hardware itself, right? And so I guess this is handy for when just a long or something else won't cut it, but that's what we'll be using for this example. And this may be handy. You would. This is how we build classes, right? How we instantiate objects. So you probably would have assumed to make one of these this way, and we certainly will use this. So, we'll go back. Clearly this isn't the answer. But I'm going to use our good friend Link. Let's bring Link in. You just get a feeling for that, right? When we're dealing with collections that kind of vary with size, hopefully you start to think along these lines and you, you think enumerable in these scenarios and you are becoming more familiar with the methods in that class and what's at your disposal and they're your basic building blocks. So let's start there. Sounds like something we could do. First, what I want to do is get a collection of the numbers from 0 to n and then I can sort of transform that collection by using each of those values as the exponent with another link method. We've used select in the past to transform collections, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let's start with this range. Do you remember range? Range will give you, uh, you specify a starting value and a count, and it will basically count up by one from there. Feel free to check the examples. They used one to 10 here, and they're squaring each value, and you can see below that that is indeed the numbers 1 through 10 squared. So this is a lot like what we want to do, right? We want a range of numbers, and then we want to use select to transform it. In this case, we don't want squares. We want 2 raised uh, to the x power if we used x as our variable name. But this is, this is very good and very close to what we want. So let's copycat that. Range. Uh, note that we start at 0, right? That's our lower bound. And so they also specify up to n inclusive. And remember that the first parameter is our starting value, which is 0. It's always 0, right? And then we have to give a count. 
and the count is actually going to be n plus 1, right? You could imagine if I just used n and consider this first example where n equals 0, we would say range from 0 with 0 number of elements, right? The count would be 0, so it's like you're not really doing anything. And so that's why I add 1, because it's like 0 based numbering. And we should have one element there, right? So yeah, that covers our range. We get the numbers from 0 to n at this point. And then we'll use select like they did to transform it. Now they took n for their parameter name in the method. I'm going to use something different. I'll call mine num. We're going to write a lambda expression where you provide your parameter list first, which is here. And then our body. <coughs> Excuse me. So on to this. What do we want to do? We want to raise 2. 2 is always going to be our base, right? And the exponent value is going to be num, right? 2 to the num. We've used pow. You know this power. So it's always going to take, it's going to take each element in the collection from 0 up to n and uh, create another value, select transforms into another collection, two to that power. So that's perfect. Now the problem so far is, actually let me bring in the system class so we're covered on the math, right? Math resides in system. So we're good there. The problem if I just leave it like this is that pow, I believe, returns a double. And so the collection that gets made from this select statement is going to be a bunch of doubles. And I don't want that. I want big integers. So what if we just transform this into a big integer, and that way the collection that's made will be a collection of big integers? We saw the syntax for that, typical of other classes. We could say new big integer. Put this inside. Uh, that's it for my select statement. Good. And then don't forget, we get sort of a generic collection back from these link statements, and we need to return it as an array. So let's go ahead and convert to array as well. And then I think I did everything I need to do here. That should give us back in a uh, big integer array. Go ahead and test. And there's that green that we like. Uh, if you were having trouble, you can always add the log statements that you need. I'm going to run the larger attempt. Hopefully we're still good. Maybe they'll hit it with some very large values. But we're still good. And this is that nice one-liner that people seem to like. So I'll go ahead and submit this version. This works for me. And you see pretty similar stuff here. Range select, yeah. It's essentially what we did. So yeah, there you have it. Big integer was new. Hopefully you remembered range and select, but if not, uh, feel free to hit me up. Otherwise, we'll keep moving. Thanks for watching.